much. I welcome all the participants uh, at the uh, UNESCO, I think, fourth um, winter school. My name is Boglarka Koller, and I'm a full professor at the National University of Public Service in Budapest. I'm also uh, Jean Monnet Chair, European Integration, and uh, I'm, uh, my, my uh, area of interest covers differentiated integration, identity issues, uh, political system of the European Union. I think that the, the subject uh, which I'm going to cover uh, in my lecture is a very uh, actual one because uh, we are in a stage, all of us, uh, we are nowadays rethinking Europe and thinking about the possible scenarios of European integration. And uh, this is also connected to the geopolitical definition of the European Union in our era, in our contemporary era. If you look around, we will, some pictures come to uh, our minds uh, which can describe this kind of situation. Uh, among these pictures, as you see, I have included some of the crisis areas. So you can see some pictures about the burning euro remembering the, the Euro crisis, or there is a, a picture on the uh, migration crisis, or COVID is also there as an atypical crisis, a health crisis in the European Union. But the most important for us, and I will, uh, in my next, uh, uh, in the next part of my presentation, I will cover some of these areas, is the question mark in the middle. So we are interested uh, in uh, how the European Union, how the European integration can provide answers to these uh, uh, crisis areas. It's very, uh, the, the topics I'm going to cover, I will just provide you a brief um, uh, interpretation of what crisis means and, uh, and how can we uh, define it and why are we feeling that we are in a mighty rooted crisis in the European integration. Then I will cover some issues, internal crisis areas, look also outside and, and see the external environment which has changed uh, in the last uh, uh, one and a half decades. Then I will talk about normative power Europe and the changing boundaries of the European Union and just a couple of uh, words I would like to mention uh, the, the conference which is uh, concentrating on the future of Europe and redesign of the European integration. First of all, I would like to start uh, with uh, something that it's worth to, to remember when we talk about the crisis areas. Uh, one of the think tanks in Europe uh, created visuals uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and I, I like these visuals because they reflect what we feel. Uh, one of these uh, visuals is, the, is a tree, uh, and the tree's leaves are just falling, so we are just standing uh, there, and we are experiencing that something is not going into the right direction. But since it's a tree, we don't see the roots. So what they highlight, and I think it's a very nice visual to describe, is that it's, uh, it's not just one crisis area what we experience uh, in connection to European integration today, but uh, there are roots and we have to unfold these uh, issues to understand what's going on. Second, there is a scissor which is cutting the map of Europe. And I think it's also a very uh, nice visual to describe that uh, the situation today is, is, is unique because, uh, because the, the member states uh, uh, are sometimes uh, have different uh, uh, crisis management solutions, uh, tensions and debates uh, are appearing uh, very often in the European integration. And blocks of states, sometimes they have different visions how a crisis area has to be solved. For example, I can mention the, the V4 position uh, in 2015 when the migration 
crisis was at its peak and the Visegrad states provided a very different solution for it uh, and very different from that of the uh, other member states. Without going into de de details, I have to, I, I would like to mention here that um, crises were always there uh, in the European integration. So it's not unique to experience a crisis. And before uh, depicting a, a very negative picture for the future of Europe, uh, I, there is a quotation from one of the founding fathers of European integration who once said that Europe will be forced in crises and will be the sum of the solutions adopted to these crises. Uh, this quotation is from the 70s, when the European um, community at that time experienced the first uh, 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 real crisis uh, in its history. But I think it has a very uh, important message to us that uh, crises are also opportunities. And uh, in the last uh, 15 years, if you look at the European integration, we have seen that uh, Europe interpreted crises as opportunities and provided uh, solutions which are uh, looking toward uh, a new future. For example, just one example here, I, I can mention the, the, the new generation, uh, the next generation uh, solutions attached to the multi-annual financial framework, which was just uh, uh, adopted and uh, created, uh, created uh, opportunities to, to solve uh, the, the negative effects uh, caused by the COVID-19 crisis. So I don't want to, uh, that's one of my uh, arguments that uh, before uh, we are just uh, looking at uh, Europe's future in a very negative uh, way, we have, we, we, we have to always uh, remember this quotation from Monet, and he emphasized that crises are always there as opportunities too. And jumping to the internal challenges, uh, we can have a list and the list is long. So if we, if we see what happens uh, at the European level in, uh, in relation to, to European governance, the institutions, how they work, if we see the shortcomings uh, of their operation, and if uh, we list here the legitimacy crisis, uh, there, there is a lot of things, there are a lot of things at stake at this moment uh, uh, in the governance system of uh, the European Union. What we also experience is, is, this, is the politicization uh, of uh, the policy making processes, for example. So if we take one policy area, nothing is just, uh, uh, is just a, a policy issue. Everything is politicized. And I already mentioned the migration crisis, but I would like to bring up another uh, policy area. Uh, let's take the, the, for example, the economic and monetary union and the, uh, how the uh, Eurozone is going to be widened uh, in the near future. Uh, two countries, uh, Croatia and Bulgaria is in the, in the process. So in a couple of years, they are going to also have Euros in their pockets. And it's also politicized, even a very a pure uh, policy area and the decision to, to take, to, to enter the Eurozone, it's, or it's, uh, it's a political decision. It's not only a, a calculation, uh, a pure uh, economic calculation to decide if a country enters the Eurozone or if the country stays away uh, from this cooperation. We just uh, wrote, actually, we just, I just want to make a personal advertisement here. We just wrote a book about it uh, at Rutledge and published last year, the, the political economy of the Eurozone. But I can, I can name other policy areas. The member states have diverging interest in many issues and uh, the policy expectations are different from the outcomes and the public uh, and the European citizens uh, 
have expectations in certain policy fields, but they feel that they don't have the outcomes they, they imagined. European values are also at stake. Uh, democracy and rule of law issues are uh, of central interest nowadays. Everything is about it. Um, and uh, back to the first slide, what I showed you, a big question mark, how, how do we define these? Do we have a common definition or uh, the European member states, the nation states have their own versions of definition? That's a big issue. What, uh, it's important to mention here. Differentiated integration is bad. So European integration does not look like anymore as a united framework, but according to the policy areas, we have different integrations. I mentioned already uh, the Euro, Eurozone in which 19 member states currently participating, but I can also mentioned Schengen, which is a, another form of differentiated integration. But if we have a broader interpretation, even uh, the, the cooperation with the Western Balkan states uh, through their stabilization uh, agreement is also a kind of layering integration. They are not members, but they are part of uh, some layers of integration. Identity issues, trust, uh, it's a very important thing, and uh, Euroscepticism and the counter myth of the integration which are occurring and coming up all the time uh, in European political debates uh, uh, has, has, uh, have provided uh, uh, important challenges uh, to the European project. And last but not least, we're all experiencing um, COVID-19, and COVID-19 is not just a health uh, crisis, but also has uh, negative effects to our prosperity, one of the most important pillars of integration, and the negative effects uh, in economics and also uh, in the labor markets and in certain sectors. We all feel it uh, in our every days. If you look around uh, and list the external environment, there are, these are three caricatures, but there is a real picture also, the fourth one. Uh, the big, uh, big players uh, in uh, international politics uh, have changed uh, their attitude in relation to, uh, to Europe and also to European integration. Uh, here we have to mention uh, China's uh, One Belt, and, uh, One Road initiative, which uh, in uh, Xi Jinping interpretation is a, is a help. Uh, to, to, to boost uh, uh, the developments in infrastructure and it's a regional plan, but um, if it's not such a nice interpretation, the power contents are obvious there. Or if you see the, the, the Russia uh, situation at the, the border of Ukraine and there is a real picture there also, uh, it's obvious that the Eastern partnership of uh, the European Union is not delivering the results, um, uh, what, uh, what we think uh, the U Europe should deliver. And uh, the, the situation uh, and the, the attitude of the uh, presidents of the United States, you can see also Trump there, the Trump era provided uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, negative effects uh, and negative reactions to European integration, his attitude to multilateralism, and his uh, skepticism about the EU achievement was obvious. And the new president is gluing back USA on the, on the map. Uh, that created a new kind of uh, uh, turning away from Trump's era a new attitude in the international politics. So without uh, going into details, just these are the most important thing that we have to always bear in mind when we talk about the new geopolitics of Europe. NP, what is NP? Uh, and just three uh, letters are on the screen. I think that um, NP has to be a concept, a normative power concept, which has to be revisited and uh, has to be used and reinterpreted uh, in relation to what we think about Europe's role in the global uh, politics. Uh, NP 
is a normative per euro concept was developed by, by Ian Manners and was um, reinterpreted and reformulated several times. What is important for us is that MP is a normative power Europe is connected uh, to Europe's self-definition at the international level. MP, MP is, uh, is on the table, for example, uh, in the post-COVID geopolitical order as well. Because we can argue that the, the coronavirus pandemic has created a demand for closer multilateral cooperation. And there were different factors uh, that uh, came out, the US-China rivalry, the EU's pandemic response, uh, and the growing demand on the citizens, uh, European citizens' side to, to, to deliver common positions at the European scale. So MP is there. Uh, the European Union and Europe should take up the role of uh, normative, normative actor in the future. And uh, I'm ready to discuss because uh, NP has, has, has different issues to mention here, but we don't have so much time, so I'll jump to my mathematics here, which uh, I don't know if you know what I wanted to show you with this. 28 minus 1 plus 1, 2, 3 equals what? Uh, what does it show us? Uh, that in the, last, uh, in the last 15 years, there are important questions uh, in relation to how attractive is the European club? How attractive is European integration? To be or not to be a member of the European Union? And uh, here I, we have to mention that the minus one relates to the uh, United Kingdom's uh, leaving uh, the European integration after 47 years of full membership, uh, UK left the Union uh, and, uh, and left uh, important questions behind. This was a crisis area because it shows that uh, some member states do not imagine their future anymore uh, in the European club. Several aspects. Uh, can be mentioned here, uh, economic aspects, political aspects, social aspects, aspects. And as we see that, um, of course, I don't have time to, to analyze the Brexit now, but I can answer your questions. But uh, we see that uh, negative signs of Brexit can be felt uh, on, at the side of uh, UK now. And uh, there are obvious economic uh, setbacks and uh, declining uh, trends. The one, two, three shows another important policy area of the European uh, Union concerning enlargement process. And talking about geopolitics, we have to talk about Western Balkan countries as well. Montenegro, Serbia, Albania, Northern Macedonia, Macedonia currently have official status. And uh, the enlargement process uh, if one sentence uh, can be said about it is that uh, it's based, it's value based now. It's based on fundamentals. So we require these uh, member states to reform their uh, political systems, public administration, and um, and this is the way how they are they can be Europeanized. The last slide, slide I wanted to show you uh, is, uh, and I finished my talk is that uh, if all these tendencies uh, are listed, covered, discussed, uh, uh, they bring us to three concepts, which I think that they are, these are the key concepts of the future of the European Union. One is sovereignty, second is security, and the third is solidarity. All of them uh, are crucial to have uh, a common understanding if we would like to get from the past to the future. And here I have to finish my talk and I'm ready to answer uh, your questions in relation to any topic I just listed. Thank you very much.